breaking news. I am Cecil Sharp from CCW Talks, and we have a venue change, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, 2020 Summer Glory uh, on June 20th at 6 p.m. will now be taking place at the Extreme Action Park in Fort Lauderdale, just a, uh, a half a mile down the road from the CCW training facility, uh, but it's 5300 Powerline Road, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We have a huge location, indoor, but able uh, for us to have some great social distancing, make sure that everybody enjoys a, a great view of the ring uh, safely. Uh, it's an all-ages show, of course. It's, it's Coastal Championship Wrestling. Uh, but also, there will be food and there will be liquor sales available at the event. So we want a great event. We want a great space. We want everyone to be safe. And we know everyone's going to have a wonderful time. Okay? So uh, uh, please, uh, if you already had pre pre-purchased your tickets, you're just going to... Uh, it's a simple venue change. There's nothing. But now we are opening up. Uh, we, had, we had basically... We're at a sellout for the um, uh, CCW training facility. Well, now we have a, a building that's four times, five times larger uh, indoor uh, that we're going to be opening up tickets now, which is great. I know a lot of people were worried about uh, rain. There's no issue with rain. It's inside. It's in a, a wonderful uh, facility, Extreme Action Park, owned by uh, billionaire Michael Dezer, uh, who uh, is a wonderful guy. So... That was a, a cease and desist. I'm not allowed to say his name. But again, uh, uh, Summer Glory 2020, it's going to be amazing. Uh, you have the clones that are going to be there. Uh, you have amazing matches that are already announced. Um, Alex Ocean will, will wrestle DMC, uh, which, which will probably be nat match of the night. Uh, you have the uh, CCW women's, uh, women's champion Marina Tucker up against the Unbreakable. Lexi Gomez, this is Tucker's first ever title defense. It feels like she's been champion for a year. And it's her first defense uh, because of, of the horrible uh, pandemic, COVID-19. Wrestling needed to come back. And, and everyone knows the patriarch of professional wrestling in Florida uh, is CCW. 16 years, the longest running promotion. So we wanted to be the one to kick things off let's get back to wrestling let's get back to wrestling in south florida in fort lauderdale uh and we're excited we're excited for the clones we're excited for um the the big entrance of the brazilian destroyer um um you know who will be managed by by the manager of champions bill alfonso so you know you have fonzi you have the colognes uh you have uh, uh lexi lexi versus marina for the women's championship and we have amazing matches that are about to be announced as well so this week we have uh, a little bit of an international flair onto the podcast uh king shamak he is a world-renowned professional wrestler out of panama panama but also he is now a world traveling international stuntman i had to cut a little bit from the interview when he spoke about the movie because he he informed me later that he has a gag order you can't go and tell everybody about the movie you're in uh, so we did cut a little bit about that part, but he talks a little bit about, you know, what being a professional wrestler and being a, a, a stuntman is all about. So it's a wonderful interview. Again, what's in our radar? Summer Glory, the Colognes, Bill Alfonso, Alex Ocean. Agony will be defending his championship belt. It's going to be wonderful. But first... Let's hear about the CCW training facility. Bugs Moran, the man of the land here. I used to be just a hobo, but now I'm a hobo with a wrestling championship, and that's all because of CCW. Come join us at CCW Training Facility. It is the longest running professional wrestling school and promotion in Florida. Located in sunny Fort Lauderdale. Training available for professional wrestlers, managers, referees, announcers, valets, and much, much more. Call or text 954 548 5779 to start your wrestling journey. As head trainer Pablo Marquez says, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. Again, call 
Welcome to CCW Talks. I am your media director, Cecil Sharp, and we have a wonderful international guest for you this week. Many consider him the number one wrestler in the country of Panama, former Latin American champion and the longest running GWE heavyweight champion at 365 days, the wonderful King Shamak. How are you, my brother? Hey, I'm excellent, man. I'm fine. And it's not the number, it's not just the number one, it's the fucking number one. The fucking number one. <laughs> there you go. There you it. go. I love yeah. it. I love it. Um, uh, uh, King, uh, I'm so, so happy to have you on uh, CCW Talks. Uh, as you, as everybody in the world knows right now, we're going through a, a gripping uh, a pandemic. Uh, it's, it's hurting the wrestling business. Uh, Global Wrestling Evolution, your, your promotion uh, has suspended wrestling operations. How is Panama dealing with the crisis? How are you dealing with the crisis? Oh, first of all, um, I'm glad. I'm very glad to be in the po- podcast as well. And yeah, man, it is affecting the whole world, the whole world of wrestling. I think that the only place that it's, it's not affected is Florida. But um, <laughs> yeah, you know, we, we stop everything in Panama. Um, they are not, you know, they got all the gym closed. Um, the good thing about um, GWE is that um, the fact that we got our own place, so we're not a gym, we're not like a like a, like a yeah, basketball you don't, you're not arena a sharing, or anything like that. You're not sharing yeah. any space. I mean, Mr. Pascual has an amazing yeah. setup there. You know, it's like you have a, a performance center, two rings. It's a wonderful vibe. It's a it's a great place to be. It's the place to be in Panama. So at least you guys exactly are not sharing it with, you know, uh, muscle heads or basketball players, you know. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. But, you know, the worst thing about about it is, you know, the, the training. Because, um, I mean, I can do the whole thing in my in my house. You know, I live alone in my apartment and I can do my, I can work out. I can do some cardio. Um, I can do some, you know, functional workout. But um, the thing is the rain, the, the ring training, you know, the in-ring training. Um, because um, you need to take bombs. You need to take bombs every day, um, because that that's how your body adapt and your back adapt to take some bombs. Now, if I I have been like two months without take taking wow. bombs, and yeah. you know, when I go back, I will feel pain, and that's the bad thing about it about it, because we're there's no there's no way that we can uh, do an in ring training. And that's the bad thing about it. We don't really care about the shows. We would like to perform for people, but we're not able to train in the ring. And that's the thing. Yeah, no, and and and, and at Coastal Championship Wrestling, it's it's kind of a very similar thing. Is that when guys are coming back now, and exactly those first couple bumps, those first couple of days, your body is not uh, uh, attuned. To, to taking a bump, so you kind of have to restart that process all over again. Yeah. Have you been? Uh, when do you think you guys are going to be uh, able to get back in the ring? Oh, you know, I was speaking with uh, Mr. Pasquale, and he told me that um, we're supposed to be back somewhere in in the beginning or the middle of August. So I hope that happens, man, because I need to go back to the ring and I need to take some bumps. Absolutely, and, and my, my and body's think, asking for it. <laughs> and I think everyone is excited to to see GWE, you know, running again. That you guys had so much momentum going into the pandemic, and and uh, uh, you know, talking about uh, Panamanian wrestling. Obviously, you have Carcamo, you have Crush, yeah. and then you, the fucking number one. <laughs> That's it, man. Uh, uh, tell me some other. Tell me some other wrestlers in Panama we should be on the lookout for. Who are some other guys that you think are are you know are, are up and coming, or are that maybe that I've missed. Oh man, there are a lot of. I don't know if if if, um, you know, uh, there was a time that people from CCW came to Panama. Um, it was um, Pablo Marquez and um, Vinicius, which is a big guy. And when they came, um, they were able to see all the talent. I don't know if they were able to let all the the media of the CCW know about the talent. Uh, but you know, B-Boy Lang is a great wrestler. He's amazing. He's a high flyer. And you know, he's very strong, very fast. And um there's a you know there's a uh, some guys from the old school that you know they're they're good. Um I think Marabunta is very good. Ah uh, Marabunta, um, yes. Yes. Definitely. Yeah um, there are some other wrestlers. They are inactive now, but they are good, you know, and they're still able to wrestle, but they just don't want to wrestle. So, such as PAD, um, he was trained by by Pablo Marquez when he went to uh, Florida. 
Um, and there are a lot of wrestlers, man. I can, you know, I can be been saying names the whole the whole sure. po podcast, sure. you know. <laughs> and yeah, no, Vinicius and, and Pablo, they were there uh um geez about about three months ago or, or, or four months ago before everything happened. And uh, yeah, they told us it was such an amazing experience. And of course, uh, you had a match with, with the maestro Pablo Marquez. Tell me how that was. Like, what was the process of you and Pablo uh, uh, wrestling? How, how was that? Oh man, that was a challenge. <laughs> that was a challenge <laughs> because I really thought that was good. I, I really thought I, I, I really thought I was really good until I met Pablo Marquez. Man. <laughs> Shit, man. Uh, but you know, he's he's amazing. I learned a lot from being working with him, and uh, he knows a lot of the business. Uh, he knows a lot of um, the American wrestling style, and I learned a lot about it. And it was a it was a challenge, man. And when after the match, I was very, very, very um, proud of myself because I was able to um, to. Uh, um, have a good match with him. So it yeah, was many, amazing, many, man. many considered it was a match of the night. Um, uh, you know, Hugo Savinovich, who has an executive, uh, uh, role at, uh, GWE. I mean, he was raving about just, just the fact that, you know, you can put a guy like you and a guy like Pablo who just met each other, put them together and that you guys can create magic. So it's, it's important to, uh, you know, that's part of the wrestling business. Part of what, what you guys do is, is to be able to do uh, uh, magic like that. Oh yeah, you know I, I forgot that Hugo Hugo Savinovich was there, and yeah, the guys told me that he liked my 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 work, and I really think it's because of the fact that I was working with with Pablo. So, um, yeah, it was amazing, man. It was an amazing um, experience. Now here uh, uh, is where we spoke a little bit about uh, the film, uh, the, the stuntman work in his film that we're not allowed to uh, re re release yet. But first, uh, let's let's pay some bills. Uh, obviously, um, June twentieth, Summer Glory, new venue. But also, let's hear about Boca Stone Design. Boca Stone Design will create the kitchen or bathroom of your dreams. Countertops of all types: granite, quartz, porcelain, and more. Cabinets and tile with amazing quality and service with affordable pricing. Call now for a free estimate, 561-362-2085. Licensed, bonded, and insured. Remember, Boca Stone Design, 3601 North Dixie Highway, Boca Raton, Florida, 33431. Call 561-362-2085. I, I signed a contract with a big, big, big. I'll uh, cut it. I'll cut that company part out. <laughs> in the in the United States, and I cannot say anything about that. Okay, so what I'll, I can I'll, say I'll is that I make I made wait, a lot of. Wait, wait, I'll, I'll restart the because I'll edit that out. Okay, I'll restart the question. Uh, I'll play an advertisement. Okay, ready, and then I'll I'll say that. So I I know we're not allowed to say what movie it is, but um, you had worked a little bit uh, as as some stuntman work. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Like uh, a professional wrestler, now you're a stuntman. Oh yeah, man. That's that's usual, you know. The professional wrestlers always do that. But um, it is not normal when you see like a Panamanian professional wrestling wrestler doing such a thing like that. The thing is that uh, you know, I cannot gi I cannot give details about the movie. I can only say that um, I signed a contract of like a confidential contract with with a big, big, big company in Hollywood. That make um, superhero movies. I uh, I can only say that it's a superhero movie, and uh, yeah, man, it was amazing. And uh, I was working with big names, big Hollywood names, and in fight scenes. And being a professional wrestler helped me to 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 do that because I uh, um, I was able to do that because I know how to take bombs, and I was taking bombs in the um, pavement on the street. And, uh, you know, I learned a lot. Um, um, I don't know if you know this guy. He looks like Yaki Shan, Tim Wong. And he trained me and he gave me a certificate of a New Zealand uh, stunt school. And it was amazing. That was the best. Wonderful. 
yup I ever have in my whole that life. So, it sounds awesome, and you know, it's I funny made a lot of money. <laughs> and that's the best part, right? Making as much yeah. money as possible. But you, you know, you said it exactly right. You know, professional wrestling, it's like you're you are a stunt man. You have one take. So, like you said, you know, hey, I'll take a bump on the on the concrete, or you know, if you need me to jump and do a three quarter roll, or you want me to do a tiger roll. I mean, that's what what wrestlers do every single day. So I'm sure that, that was helped training. Me. That was when we went to the um, to the training. The training was about rolls, um, three quarter. The I don't know how you yeah, how you called it. The tiger jump. The tiger. tiger, the tiger oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, there you go. And I already knew how to do that, so it was very easy for me. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Sounds like an amazing experience. And then hopefully down the line, we'll have you back again when when the 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 uh, order of um, the gag order is done, so we can talk more about it. But we had originally uh, 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 we had originally met uh, in Bogota uh, at the CPW show, and uh, uh, you know we had some we had some great conversations. I was there doing a lot of interviews and in, and in, in press at the time. Yeah, uh, yeah. So traveling around traveling around uh, South America and other countries. What type of experience uh, uh, do you feel like uh, you can have with with that ability to go around so many countries? Oh man, it's it's very important to go to go to another country. You cannot stay in your country, man, because for example, I can talk of my of my experience in Panama. Um, we have this um, kind of a Mexican hardcore style. Right. And then when the GWE was created, we started to have this American style. I know that there were there there you know in the past there were other companies like RXW that did the same thing. Right. But when you go outside, you see more styles. You see different scenarios. You see um, different um, locker locker rooms, and you know it's amazing. It's very important. And the most difficult difficult thing about um, Colombia, Bogota, was the 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 weather, man. The I don't know how you say the high. The altitude. The hey, altitude. the altitude. No man. one could the, breathe in that place. <laughs> my God, man! I lived my whole life in Panama, and I went to you know I work in Costa Rica, but that that was a different thing. And I you know I was work. There were there there was there were like more um, CCW um, talent at that event. Right. Like the Guadalupe brothers and right. other guys, and yeah, you uh, know, Vinicius Pablo uh, and Vinicius, then uh, Bugs Moran, Pablo, uh, yeah, uh, southeastern champion, new southeastern champion. What, what, Bugs what Moran. was the name of the guy that was performing with the Joker? That's Bugs Moran. Yeah, hey, the Joker. Man, I, I, I love that guy, man. I love that guy. He's amazing. So yeah, and man, I was working. Uh, with um, oh, JC Navarro. Uh, JC Navarro, that's right. Yeah, OT Fernandez for the another wrestler. Yeah, I yeah so I was working uh, with JC Navarro, and we were dying, man. <laughs> we <laughs> we missed a lot of spots because we were like, hey, hey, man, let's go home. And when I um, went back to the locker, I was dying. But I was, you know, I was acting like I was cool. I was like, hey, how are you doing? All right, I'm okay, I'm okay. And, you know, when I, when I saw O.T. Fernandez and the other guys that, you know, being around the world in more countries, he trained in Arena Mexico with uh, very important With Force guys. Guerrero, I believe, yeah. yeah and yeah. He, were, he was lying on the floor, and I was like, if this guy is lying on the floor, I do, I'm going to do the same thing, man. <laughs> I stopped acting, and then I just... Lay down in the floor, man. I was dying, but it was a very good experience. Yeah, we we uh, we had a second floor of a hotel to ourselves, and uh, every time I walked up uh, uh, the stairs, I was out of breath. So I couldn't imagine you in the ring. Uh, you know, it's it's <laughs> so difficult. They call it the they call it the fridge because it's cool, but they should also call it the fridge because there's no air in there. It's unbelievable. Yeah, and the funny <laughs> thing about it is that when I when I was at the hotel, I was very very very. Um, very scared about it because I was like, "How I'm gonna wrestle? If I, if, how I'm gonna wrestle if I don't have, if I can't breathe, man?" <laughs> and I was training. I was training for two days, doing some push-ups. Um, I was training on the on the stairs, going up and down, and even doing that, and I died. Yeah, it sounds. Yeah, so it was it was difficult. Definitely sounds difficult. Uh, to yeah. talk a little bit more about you know you're you're a heel. Um, you're you know one of the biggest heels. Uh, uh the biggest heel. Uh, at GWE, um, I'm you know a I big see heel in Panama, man. In Panama, of course. <laughs> Nobody can heel. touch me. <laughs> 
But you know, you, you're lucky because uh, uh, you know when uh, I spent some time with Carcamo, he's Carcamo twenty four seven a day, twenty four seven. Yeah. But you have a very you have a huge advantage. You don't have to be because you get to take off that mask. Do you ever have any moments with a, a little bit of tension, maybe when you're with other wrestlers, uh, you know, for people to see you without the mask or to recognize it that that's actually you? Has there been any moments where you were recognized even without the mask? Yeah. Um. The thing is that I when I started i started without the mask right and uh then when i went to the gwe um mr pasqual asked me to wear a mask he told me that he will give him give me more money if i wear a mask and that's the reason why i started to wear a mask so you know in La in latin america you cannot say who you are without the mask is something that you should respect so um yeah um sometimes i'm training and there are some fans around you know they're trying to get tickets or things like that and i'm i i gotta run away to the locker room to to cover my face yeah yeah that's amazing uh i think that happened a couple of times when i was there and uh it's amazing that how important that is to to uh you know to you but also as a culture in in, in professional wrestling yeah i'm the guy that sh that wait until until the end you know i, I gotta wait until the the last fan, um, you know, go out of the arena, and that's what you do when you have a mask, man. But you clearly, you clearly, you love pro professional wrestling. Um, what are some of the styles that you watched growing up? Were you always a fan as a kid, or was you know, what 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 is your favorite wrestling to watch when you were younger? I was I was a fan since when when I was eight years old. I knew about pro wrestling before um, because um, I remember the the blue ring, the the blue WWF ring yeah, that kids use for the action figures. <laughs> and I remember the the action figures. I remember Hulk Hogan. Everybody know knew Hulk Hogan at that time. But um, the the one that always um, was like the most amazing for me was the Ultimate Warrior. Um, action figure, but I didn't know it. He, he was Ultimate Warrior. I only knew Ho Hogan, <laughs> and uh, I never watched um, wrestling because I didn't have cable. My friends had uh, had cable, but not me. And in 1998, um, they started to put it in in national television. Right. Uh, and one day it was um, like switching, tuning the channels, and I. It's amazing because the first thing I saw, I watched was uh, a fucking Hell in the Cell match with <laughs> with Stone Cold, Undertaker, Kane, and Mankind. So the you came I, at the right time. The first thing I, I didn't, I mean, my first experience wasn't like a regular single match. It was a fucking Cell in the Cell with one of the four best man, and it was amazing. I was, hey man, I was like. That was the most amazing thing I ever watched. And then um, I started to watch WWE always. Then they put the WCW in um, national TV as well, but I didn't like it because it was 1998 and they were they were garbage, man. <laughs> they, yeah, it was already yeah. it was on the downturn already. Yeah, Goldberg and Sting were, you know, they were the only guys I, I liked to watch. So I always liked the, the storytelling. Um, I always like storytelling, good promos, um, you know, guys. Yeah, Steve Austin, Shawn Michaels at the time. Yeah, as well. guys with the with the mic skills, guys able to speak. Um, because, you know, I really think that everybody is able to learn how to do um, moves, moonsaults, flips, you know. And uh, what makes a difference or what, what makes me put pro wrestling or tune pro wrestling on my TV is, you know, to watch a good story. That's it. I know that, that there are guys that like the moves and like the, the sure. indies and like the, 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 this all elite wrestling thing. When you see like you, you're watching a wrestling match and it looks like a, like a street fighter match when you die, when the, when your power <laughs> is over, right. You, you get a knee, you get a knee in your face and then you mm -hmm. just, um, like, wake up you you wake up right away man it doesn't make any sense if you watch ufc and you and you see what happens after somebody um hit with a knee on the face nobody will get get up that fast man so um i i prefer storytelling i prefer 
and and that's something that GWE really has focused on is you know uh, storytelling and and uh, um, you know st- wrestling storyline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one. It's the first time it happened. And yeah, you so, know the the guys of the old school doesn't really like that because they they um think it's kind of entertaining instead of pro wrestling. Yeah, sports entertainment and, versus pro wrestling. Exactly. Yeah, in Panama the K K face. It's still a real deal, man. With the old school, oh, it's still a real great. deal, and you can get, you can get in trouble if you do like shoot interviews. And I'm doing, a, I'm doing now. Uh, this is my first um, pro wrestling shoot. <laughs> it's interview. a mix. It's a, yeah. It's a it's, it's a work kind shoot, of that. Uh, yeah, because <laughs> uh, it's been like five years in, in Panama. They really respect that, and uh, that's the reason why they don't they don't like um, GWE. But there's a lot of fans that like that. We're in 2020, man. Yeah, I mean, you, you, of course, you have old school guys who are very protective of, of that type of stuff, and they also don't like, they don't want to see a flip, they don't want to see those things. So, you know, of course, you're going to have wrestling's going to change. There's going to be some differences, and yeah. and like you said, sometimes, of course, I would love to see a guy really sell an elbow or sell a, a knee to the face, like you're you're talking about. But also, you know, you 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 want to have a reason for the match to happen still, and I think that's something that Coastal Championship Wrestling does well, and GWE also does well. Yeah. So it's great to see, you know, uh, wrestling moving forward. And even though, you know, uh, Pablo Marquez is a very, uh, he's a very traditional guy. Of course he yes, is. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, very sir. traditional. Uh, but I of course he you. also, yeah, of course, but also, uh, uh, you know, he understands, you know, it's it's the times we have to, we have to uh, move forward. Uh, uh, King, we love, love wrestling road stories. Give me a fun uh, uh, wrestling road story. Oh man, <laughs> really? <laughs> you know that you know it, a lot of things happen when you're when you're in the road. That's not the when you say wrestling road story. You're talking about when you go to like a different yeah. City when let's say you go that, to a yeah. different city together and then that's the thing, man. A lot of crazy things happens when you <laughs> when you're in the road, and I, I don't know if I can say <laughs> what happened, man. <laughs> so, but well, let's say um. I don't know, man. You know, Panama is a very, very um, small country, and uh, it's very difficult now to to wrestle in diff- a different um, province. We, you have states in the states. We have right. province in Panama. But um, when I was in a different promotion before, we used to go to to went to different province and wrestle, and I really enjoyed that because you're with the guys in a bus, you're having a good time. Um, we were we went to a river. We went to uh, to the beach. Um, a lot of things, man. But um, I don't know, man. I don't think I can. I can. <laughs> I understand. Say, I can say uh, like a road story. All road story are related with alcohol. And <laughs> of, course, of course, and, of course. Know. <laughs> but but you know what's great is is uh, you're working working in in a, an amazingly beautiful country that Panama is. Uh, oh, yeah. and, and so you know you have those opportunities to go and work in a small town. Uh, and maybe it's not a big show. Maybe it's a bigger show, you know, because there's nothing else for them to do but to come watch professional wrestling. But, you know, you have that opportunity to go to these little small towns. And, and you know, I know that Pablo uh, and myself as well, like I, 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 I honestly believe to go in and to see as much as you can, uh, you know, as a media director, but, you know, the wrestlers too, to see as much as you can. And you have so much of that opportunity in Panama. Where do you see Panama? Like, uh, uh, where do you see GWE in, in uh, two three, four years from now, it's obviously it's growing. Unfortunately, we had this horrible pandemic, but you know, uh, um, with Hugo Savinovich there, uh, Mr. Pasquale is, is an excellent, uh, motivator and an executive. Uh, what, do, where do you see, uh, uh, wrestling in Panama moving, moving forward? Well, I really think now, um, GWE is the best promotion in the whole, um, Central America, uh, territory. And, uh, I hope, I hope in five years we, um, we make it to the best in in Latin America, of course, after Mexico. But you know, right. Mexico, course, I mean, you Mexico have, doesn't CML, count. It yeah, doesn't count. Mexico doesn't, doesn't count. count. But everywhere, so else, I, I really I think, think now the possible. best, yeah. the best, um, the best, the number one in Latin America is um, like Chile. Sure. But in five years, I think that we could be better than then because um, this is a country with with a lot of uh, a lot of money. We are only four million people and we make a lot of money so i really think that we should be in a better position than, than chile but they've been working for like the last 10 years and we're starting so 
it's something it's it is about timing my friend it is about I, time i i agree it's only the beginning and and in you know uh, uh we're talking also about uh, coastal championship wrestling we had our 16 year anniversary show uh, wow, as you 16? know 16 long years uh, amazing, uh like, man. like coastal championship wrestling you know and we our anniversary show was amazing over over 700 people at the show uh now we're back uh on june 20th uh, yeah. um with the show but i want i wanted to ask you you know you your your chances your 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 opportunities where where do you see yourself do you co- want to come to the united states do you want to uh, obviously we would love to have you in in coastal championship wrestling what are some of your plans moving forward uh, uh, as a professional um, wrestler you know i don't really like to talk about plans because sometimes you talk about it and then it never happened but i'm going to tell you what are my plans because i really you you sound like a nice guy <laughs> cool guy so let's do that um you know this pandemic thing um ruined a lot of plans um, I was about to go to, um, Peru. Um, I supposed to, I, you know, I supposed to be there in July, something around that, but you know, now I can, I can't go because of this, um, coronavirus thing. And well, now we'll have to wait. I will have to wait to see what happens. Um, to be honest with you, my plans are to go to Mexico and then go go to japan but i should go to florida and i should go to ccw that's something that will happen because i would like to um go there train and also have some matches that's gonna I, happen. I think i think pablo wants a rematch anyway so i think there's a you for sure need to come uh, uh, sure uh come to the <laughs> come to the ccw training facility uh you know and 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 stay for a couple shows stay for a few months i think will be amazing and uh, uh you know you can show your talents to uh, a north american audience as well you know obviously for, for someone like you obviously i'm, re- I'm really goes, sure i should but, be there uh, like at the end of this year or next year wonderful. that's a fact yeah, the CCW fans will be, be waiting for you. Uh, in the meantime, where can we find uh, you on social media? I know you just have a new YouTube channel. Uh, uh, where can we find oh, yeah. uh, the king, the number one fucking wrestler in Panama? <laughs> oh yeah, now now you will. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will be able to see my 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 social media on the descriptions. However, I'm gonna say on Facebook I'm King Shamak, right? If you would like to be like my friend. I have a regular Facebook account, which is um, Pro Wrestler King Shamak. I also have my fan page, Facebook fan fan page, which is, which is um, King Shamak. And then um, there's the Instagram and the Twitter account, which is the same. Um, that's at King underscore Shamak. You know, King as your king, as your highness. And then Shamak is S H. I mean S H E. MC. Wonderful. Oh, on the YouTube channel. You should subscribe, man. All of the, yeah, it's subscribe to the YouTube channel. You're going to see it in the descriptions of uh, this video if you're watching on YouTube. If you're uh, using Apple Podcasts or Spotify, uh, go into the uh, show notes, follow him. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, coming up for Coast Championship Wrestling, you'll definitely hopefully see him at the end of the year. And, and of course, um, the social media, the Instagram is um, at GWE official. It is the same for Twitter and the Facebook page fan is Global Wrestling Evolution. Wonderful. Yeah. King, King, you're always a pleasure. Uh, I can't wait to work with you again uh, in uh, uh, anywhere in the world, back in Panama, you know, uh, you know, interviewing you and, and, and uh, studying the wrestling business. But I just wanted to thank you so much. Oh no, sir! You're very welcome. Thank you, man. And um, um, believe me, I will be there. I will go to CCW. It will happen. <laughs>